Hey YouTube, it's finally here. We purchased the Troutman Jumbo Classic Albany um, rocking chairs. And this is the same company that made the famous uh, JFK rocker that you see so much on uh, the internet and whatnot. And um, we've been looking for good rockers for our porch and uh, evidently there's some assembly required. And we ordered two of them, got them two of them, and they're both allegedly in this box. So we're gonna take you through the whole process of unboxing it, seeing what they look like, and actually putting together real measurements of the chair and what it looks like. Because while I know Troutman is a very storied um, business and we wanted to buy American, we were slightly um, disappointed with the lack of detailed measurements of the product and um, my name George I call myself Georgia Bigfoot because well I'm a really tall dude with big feet so I purchased the jumbo rocker because well I'm a I'm a jumbo guy <laughs> anyway so this video is gonna be a bunch of different videos compiled together and so there'll be a little segue in between each of them and uh, just stay with me and we'll see how this goes okay so we ordered two of these Troutman rockers We wanted to buy American for our porch. We had a 111 year old house, with this bomber porch on it. And we went with unfinished. And um, there's two of them nestled in here. And uh, Troutman, they're the um, rocking chair manufacturer who made the rocking chair for JFK and while this isn't the JFK chair we were um anxious to get it because it's the jumbo version and I'm I'm really tall I'm six seven and so something that said jumbo on it sounded appealing so we'll unbox these and show you what they look like and we'll also do specific measurements the one thing we were disappointed with the Troutman website is nowhere to show the distance between the seat base to the armrest height. And we've noticed that looking at rocking chairs, sometimes that's um, a short distance and sometimes it's a tall distance. And uh, anyway, we'll take a look at it. So let's look at some of the things on the box. Please check us out, trapmanchairs.com and rockingchairtherapy.org. Troutman Chair Company, established 1924, world's best rockers, no glue construction, solid oak products, interlocked joints, swelled joint construction, stainless steel arm braces and nails. All right, so I just took the box knife, of course, making sure to cut away from me. Our Maltese has come out to check on things. Hey, Tucker. Hey, buddy. You can stay there. And you can see how they've nestled this two pack of these chairs together. It's really stoutly wrapped. I just hope that this thin wall of cardboard on the bottom has protected the wood. Because when I found the delivery guy, he was pushing this up our stairs, like dragging it. And it just makes me wonder how it's been shipped this whole way. But of course, we'll go through that. Looking here at the top, these don't look too buggered up. They look like, I would say, that I guess they're okay. So after cutting away some of this uh, shrink wrap plastic, I'm looking at the runners here the rocker part, and they're both wrapped together. I'd be curious to know how if you order one, how it ships. Does it ship in a box this shape, or is it different? Either way, I like the packaging so far. I mean, these guys have to be pros. They've been making rocking chairs for 95 years, so you'd think they know what they're doing. Still made in America. I will say this, one thing that YouTube video is not going to capture is the smell. The smell is fantastic. It just 
just reeks of American craftsmanship is about the best way I can put it. All right, so as I begin to open this, I want to point out that I noticed here underneath the wrapping of the bottom part is that there are um, these tiny pins in here, almost finishing nails. So be warned when you're unwrapping to not potentially throw these away. It also appears there's some sort of instruction on this blue piece of paper. We'll examine it when we open it. Okay, so these are the instructions that came with these. And I'll say this, there are clearly two different rockers, one sitting there, one inside the box, and these are not marked rocker A and these marked rocker B. I mean, I assume they're all made the exact same way. One's not marked rocker right and one rocker left. It's just, that's the way they came out of the box. So, I mean, I'm hoping that it doesn't matter and that the rockers, you know, rock true and free, regardless, you know, how I put them uh, together. I mean, clearly there's a front and a rear and it appears that this is the front and this is the rear. Let's see, it says invert rocker on table using padding, place runners on chair, the front being the shortest point from end to first hole. Tap into place using a rubber mallet or hammer, moving back and forth from front to back. Firmly hammer runners onto chair front first. A little force may be necessary. Don't worry, they're solid hardwood. Once fitted properly using nails provided, attach runner through the inside of the side of the runner. The nail must go through the side of the tenon. Peg, please call with any questions. That's good. 704-872-7625. Should runner crack during assembly, we will gladly replace. That's nice. I'm going to Google that number real quick and see if that's a Troutman number or hay needle number. I assume it's Troutman given that it's a 704 area code as that's typically North Carolina. Okay, so I just Googled that phone number and it is a Troutman number. It's to their customer service, so... It's interesting that this is shipped, came shipped in a Troutman box, but was listed on the Hay Needle website. So that tells me this is um, obviously Troutman packaging, and I'm not gonna worry too much about what position, uh, rather which runners go to which, especially if they're saying, hey, if you crack one during installation, we'll just Send you another one, so. Okay, so we've got the first year we're gonna do, um, mounted upside down on our table. We've got some padding on the table, and we're looking at the four different runners here. And you know, my initial concern was, is there a left and right? Are they, are they paired, are they match sets? Well, they all look like they've been cut the same way. So I'm not too concerned about that, but I do want to point out to people who are overly analytical, such as myself, that it does appear that these front holes look pretty evenly matched where they are in the wood. But these back holes, you can tell, like this one, the gap is about an inch but here on this side, I'm sorry about, about a half an inch, but on this side, they're about a quarter of an inch. See that? So like between the hole and the side, that's like a quarter of an inch. And between the hole and the side here, that's like a half an inch. Same thing with this one, half an inch, quarter of an inch. These aren't as pronounced. I mean, it's probably not a big deal. I mean, who's ever really paid that close attention to the, the spacings on their furniture? But it's just when I saw it, it made me wonder, is one a left, is one a right? So we're just going to put these all together and trust it all turns out well. All right, I want to pass along some additional info before we take the mallet and strike these runners in. It has to do with these little nails. 
that it comes with. I mean, basically, I've got these in place. So we're gonna mount it, we're gonna knock this one in halfway, and then knock this one in halfway, and then continue knocking all the way down here, and knocking all the way down here. Then, we're gonna take these nails, and they basically say, hey, just knock them in. This is solid oak, knock them in, and we're gonna drive them through here. And you can see that these nails are not too long, such that they go all the way through, but long enough certainly to go through this one side and then through the wood and then out the other side. Now, what we were talking earlier about how this is like a half inch and this is a quarter of an inch, they say we're gonna wind up striking these from the inside is where we're gonna to wanna to nail them. So we're gonna strike them from the inside here, like this way. So in that case, just tentatively looking here, those front ones are, are pretty much dead even. In the back ones, it'd almost be ideal if the thinner part of the wood was on the inside but here you can tell that the thinner wood is here and the thicker wood is over here. There's really no way around it because they all seem to be cut the same way. So on one side at least it'll be on the interior and the other side it won't be. My wife found these instructions, which are not from Troutman, they're from somebody else. And I'm going to uh, take an image of this with Scannable and post it at the end of this video for people who want to see these directions. I won't read all of them, but it was basically from someone who had assembled another one of the Troutman chairs, and it seems to be like some pretty good information. So I'm going to have this run for about three to five seconds at the end of this video. So if you want to see it, just take the slider and slide all the way to the end and you'll see an image of this and you can pause it and you can look at these directions closer. Okay, so I don't have anybody filming me and I don't have a tripod, my apologies. I was able to take this runner and using this 13 ounce hammer in this rag, William Sonoma rag, fold it over this way and fold it over this way and fold it again like this. I've taken the hammer and I've tapped a little bit here and tapped a little bit here and tapped a little bit here and so forth. And I've been able to get it to where it's meeting the very front part of this and the back is meeting um, the back part, but you can tell that where they've made these peg holes, there's just no way it's going to be flush with the peg holes. I mean, it'll be flush here, obviously, and we can make it flush on the front. I mean, it, it probably doesn't matter. It's just something to consider. And, um, which also means when it comes time to place the nails, we're going to want to put the nails in such a way that it actually, uh, goes through and contacts you know, it goes through this wood and actually contacts this peg it goes into as well. We want it to be able to go through both. So anyway, let's walk over to here. I'm kind of placing that up with there. I'll say this, the, the firmness and construction of this rocking chair is just bomber i mean it feels bomb proof and one thing to note it's got this nice little bracket on it that says troutman and while we've purchased this in 2019 i should mention that we have an old railroad station waiting bench that we purchased that's from the 1890s and as far as the construction and solidarity and styling and looks, it resembles a lot this 1924 originated company that builds these chairs 
the same way for all these years. So I'm excited to get these on and get this assembled. And I guess, you know, I'm not griping about the assembly here. I'm just showing everyone how I'm doing it. So maybe it helps somebody at home make a decision on this. And also this video is going to be a longer video because I'm going to go into the details of how it sits and how it rocks and everything like that too. But my guess is when you actually are in North Carolina and are at Troutman or at a dealer, you know, they're just pre-assembled and you buy the whole thing the way it is. So, but this is for a mail order and we're in Texas and, and uh, hopefully this helps somebody. Continue watching and I'll continue showing you what we got. Actually, before we go to the next one, let's just take my little hammer here. You know, I have a rubber mallet. I just, I don't know where it is. I've just been tapping on it like this. And you can see it goes down a little bit. And then we're going to tap on this one and vice versa. So. Okay, so this is now in place on this side. And about five taps, front and back. So one, two, three, four, five. 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 And I did that like seven times on each side. Seven times here, seven times here, five times a piece. And that's pretty much what take took to drive it in. You just didn't want to overstress anything. And now everything appears to be in place. What I'm gonna do is, um, I'm actually gonna set it on the ground and see how it rocks real quick and make sure everything's level and smooth. And then I'm gonna go about, I'm actually, am gonna drill a pilot hole here and here with a drill bit smaller than the, the width of the nail, which is already pretty tiny just to help be able to, to um, guide those nails in closer and I'll, better, I'll show you. All right, I have not nailed these finishing nails in yet, but I sat in it and it's a dream. Now, at six foot seven, I will admit that when I sit in it, my elbows do not contact Do not contact right here. I mean, they can if I if I lean over a little bit to the right. It does. If I'm sitting upright and straight, my hand hits here, and I'll sort of show it at an angle. If that's even showing up well. My apologies on the camera work. If I had to padding like President Kennedy had, then it'd be perfect. But for someone like my wife, for example, who's much shorter than me, her elbows hit perfectly on here. This is, quote, the jumbo rocker. And certainly the width, um, I would say I would need, I, could, I wouldn't want to handle anything narrower. And they look dynamite. Let's put those finishing nails in. I think I'm real happy with the way it's rocking. You can see there's a bit of a tremble, but it has to do with these expansion joints in the concrete. Maybe we should move this back a little bit. It's silent. It should be called the silent rocker. I'm, I love it. And because of this model being a little higher, it's going to present well also from the street. Okay, so I've got the first nail in on this side and I got it smooth. It looks great. And one thing I want people to know is these nails that were shipped by Troutman. Let's pull one out real quick. 
Let's just pull them all out. You know, they don't go quite all the way through the runner, which is a good thing. And I used a 1 16th inch bit from Hitachi. And the bit is longer than the nail. So when I installed the bit in my drill, I made sure that I installed it in such a way that it would not drill accidentally all the way through the runner. In fact, I made it so it wasn't quite as long even as the nail. And while it is fractionally smaller than the nail, I still left it short so that while it was still a tight squeeze through the nail, the drilled nail hole area from the drill bit, I still had a uh, fresh wood for it to pinch through. And I was able to strike it through nice and clean. Also when putting it in, be mindful that these pegs, the pegs right here are, uh, are one inch. They're one inch pegs, so when you're driving the nail through, you know, you want it probably, I was aiming for like the middle. So this digit of my finger is about one inch. So that's about the middle and in the middle of the dowel of the peg, just for maximum strength or what in my mind would be maximum strength. So I'm gonna do that to the rest of these and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so this is the last one. I've got my drill bit. I've got my nails. I'm gonna show you what this entails. I did not mean for that to rhyme. So this digit of my finger is one inch. So this one inch puts the base of it about what, right here. And then I can see the width of that peg and I'm just kind of eyeballing what is the middle and making sure I'm in the middle of the dowel and then drilling in slowly. Looks good. And then carefully tapping this in. So the nail doesn't get bent. You'll have to pardon my unprofessional photography here. Just easily tapping it in. And I'm gonna cut the camera off here and finish her off. But, you know, it surprises me that someone like Troutman doesn't make a video showing how to do this, but I'm happy to do it. And I'm sure someone else will come along and we'll put together a more professional video than this one. But you can see right there where I put the other one in and it looks all solid and stout. Let me finish this one off and then I'll show you what the chair looks like with all the paper taken off of it and all put together. All right, so that's the last one to go in. Perfectly smooth. Midway on the dowel, about a half inch down. I mean, nowhere does it say to do it midway on the dowel, about a half inch down, but I'm thinking as far as um, having the nail protected by a maximum amount of wood, I want the maximum amount of wood around it so it doesn't possibly chip or tear one day. Okay, so we have this first one assembled, we like it. I only have one problem with this rocking chair and that is that the height, the distance between here and here and where my elbow touches to here is not high enough. 
And my wife, she's like 5'3", five, 5'4", five, and it's not really even high enough for her either. And so uh, it is a beautiful rocking chair. It is heirloom quality. We would prefer, though, to be able to sit in a rocking chair where our elbows comfortably rest on the armrests. And we don't feel like we have to, to bend down to get to them. So that's something to consider. I'm gonna show you the measurements here in a moment. I just wanted to show you the second rocker I'm assembling. I'm about to put in the last nail in this pack from Troutman. Came with, it appears, nine nails because I have an extra nail. And that 1 16th inch bit has been perfect on all these holes. Has been plenty snug when I've put the finishing nails in and it's been enough drilled to be a perfect guide to uh, hammer this in without any kind of splintering or anything like that. So the assembly and the construction has all been top notch. We love the way it looks. I'll show you how it looks from the curb. You can see the, um, the backs protruding up above um, the front part of the porch. It looks great. They look amazing. So hold on, more video to follow. All right, we've got both assembled and Tucker, as we call him the T-Man, seems to approve. Do you like it, Tucker? The Troutman chair. All the nails went in easy. I did drill pilot holes, like I said, with a 1 16th inch drill bit. I made sure the drill bit was recessed in the drill so it didn't drill all the way through the runners. Tucker, do you love them? Yeah? Let's see how they present on the sidewalk. Hey, Tucker, buddy. For anyone curious, our Foursquare was built in 1908. It's been a great house. All right, let's do some measuring real quick. So that's 48 inches, and that's exactly what the website said. width of the chair at the back is 19 and a half inches and the width of the chair at the front excuse me Tucker is 23 inches the height of course it's variable as it rocks it looks to be about 26 inches and the height of the seat I think if he wasn't standing there, it would be about 17 inches. But the real distance, which is fixed, from the seat, front of the seat, to the armrest is eight inches. In the back, from your butt goes to the seat, looks to be about seven and a quarter inches. So for those of you at home who are like, hey, I need something deeper, then you may want to look around. One more measurement, and that is going to be the depth. I mean, we're going to keep these. We're happy with them. We would prefer the armrest be higher. So here in the middle, it looks like the depth, excuse me, T, buddy is about 19 inches. He's licking my hand. <laughs> the width of the armrests at their thickest is three and an eighth. The width of the back of the chair is 19 inches.
the length of the runners. Looks to be at 31 inches. And the distance, because some people may want to know this, between the back peg and the back of the runner is 12 inches. And I mention that because I think I wouldn't mind it if the runners went back a little further. So it would tilt back a little bit further. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, post them underneath. You know, I'm not a craftsman. I'm just a guy looking for stuff that works. I don't know if you can tell, but it says Troutman on this middle bracket. And the chairs present and look absolutely fabulous on our porch. I'll say this, the price we paid for them was $202, $202 plus tax off of hay needle. And we could have paid $100 more each to have them painted white. But I am a former professional painter and sales rep for Valspar and I paint pretty good. So I figured if we want them white, we'll make them white. And we'll do a high gloss enamel and just have it buttery rich, you know, high quality white. But right now we're gonna stay with this natural finish. I really like the way it looks. Thanks for watching. Make it a great day. Here's one more view to pass along, and that is the view from the inside of the house, looking through the window out on the rockers. It's got the right look, doesn't it?